This video is about the train lie, or maybe some people pronounce it train lie, R7 turnout. It has a radius of 7 foot on the diverging section, uh, and the, the diameter of the track, of course, would be uh, 14 feet in that case. <clears throat> uh, there's an interesting problem I came into, bounding it on my outdoor layout here, which I'm still building. And uh, I'm using deck boards, uh, since I'm a, kind of a hill here, with posts supporting the thing up. <clears throat> with, uh, with this particular turnout, I've experienced an interesting problem because it has, as it turns out, uh, not to have a pun, but uh, it has a magnet magnetic reed switch uh, when the points are thrown to switch the polarity, the voltage polarity from the track to the f powered frog here. And what happens in this case is I notice that when the points are moved, um, the turnout uh, reed switch was always in the diverging path direction. So when I had a train go through in the straight path, it shorted out through the, through the power uh, leads through the locomotive. <clears throat> There's a poly fuse, I believe, under here <clears throat> to protect it. But at any rate, it was an interesting problem, so I troubleshot it with a, with a compass, as it turned out. And it turns out these screws I've been using are magnetized. And there's one screw that happens to be under here, uh, and it precludes the the uh, reed switch from switching. So that's an interesting problem to have. So with the compass pointed north, and I'm out here on my outdoor layout with the R7 train light turnout. And again, these screws uh, become were magnetized, I guess, when they're made in the factory. And they're from China, but that doesn't matter, I don't think. <clears throat> and uh, if I bring the compass close to the screw, you can see it's deflecting the compass in a, in a different direction. And there's another one here. You can see it's wildly moving. It'll settle down and point to that screw eventually. <laughs> or maybe this screw here. <laughs> Here's the companion turnout. And it's a, in this case, a right uh, path, right diverging path. And just for the purpose of illustration, here's a compass and it's pointing magnetic north. And these are the deck screws I was using, and uh, they're two-inch deck screws. I guess it's a painted deck screw, so it won't rust. <coughs> it's, it turns out to be steel. But here, under this device, underneath here, is the reed switch right here. And when these points switch back and forth, there's a low-intensity magnet inside here to cause the switching of the reed switch so that the point rail, this is the underside here, and there's apparently a poly fuse here. <clears throat> uh, it'll get the correct polarity of, you know, switching from the diverging rail to this, or the straight rail to this, depending on the path you choose here. So the interesting phenomena is that if I switch this, I could hear the little relay, read relay clicking, each time I switch it. But if I take this screw, and it turns out that it's magnetized, as you can see here, the compass moves, depending on where I put this thing. So you can see it go around and around and around. <laughs> so if I bring the, the magnetized screw underneath here, like this, and try to switch this thing. See if I can do it with one hand. There's no clicking action. If I pull it away, there's a clicking action. Can't seem to hold it, just one hand here, but that's what's happening. Apparently the magnetic field of this is overpowering the low intensity magnet inside here and always leaving it in the, in the diverging position. Uh, 
you know, depending on where that screw happens to be under the turn. Here I've taken up the train lie switch that has the issue with the reed switch being forced into the the one thrown position of the, of the diverging path because of this magnetized screw. And you can see the compass, the green line is, if you can see it here, the green line is facing north, but the compass is deflected with the arrow there in a completely different direction. And so you can, what I plan to do is replace that magnetized screw, and the one nearby it too, with uh, the stainless steel screws which are non-magnetic. For example, if I bring the stainless steel screw up to the compass, it doesn't affect it. Whereas if I take the magnetized screw, you can see it affects it quite profoundly. You can see there, it's turning like a motor. <laughs> and the non-magnetized non stainless steel screw doesn't do that. <clears throat> so I installed the new stainless steel screws which are the non-magnetic non and these there's one there and this was the principal one that had the problem because that's right under the magnet area in the turnout <clears throat> and so you can see the compass is pointing north now which is normal and if I were to take this screw I took out, this magnetized one, you can see what it does here. It deflects the compass in an undesirable direction. These screws are still, the deck screws that were in there, they're magnetic, but they are magnetized. Uh, these ones here, here, there's one under here, and here, and here. And I think it, this might be an issue, but it's far enough away where I think it's going to be okay. And if it presents itself a problem, I'll replace it too later. So there you have it. I've reinstalled the train lie uh, R7 turnout. And uh, with the stainless steel screws having replaced the two screws that are underneath the track, uh, there was one right under here, which was uh, really the most prominent problem one, but I replaced the one next to it just in case. <laughs> And I can hear the clicking action now of the reed relay. So it should be working fine then.